Hi everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show and we are all about looking after your mental health and well-being. Now today we have a very special guest here on the show. He's had a Hollywood film made about him. He holds the world record for receiving the most get well cards ever, but most impressive of all, he beat cancer. And now he's here on the show with us to share his experience. Craig Shergold will be telling me all about his miraculous journey as well as his aspirations of becoming a stand-up comedian with the help of mentor Stephen Truby, who will also be joining me on the couch. Then we'll be giving Craig some extra help as he moves on to the next big stage in his life, finding a girlfriend. Dating coach Genevieve Zawada of Elect Club will be giving Craig some top tips on how he can find the perfect partner, as well as giving him some of the do's and don'ts of what to do on a date. Also, makeup artist Sani Summer will be giving me her advice on how to prepare for that first date, if you're a man or a woman actually. And then at the end of the show, I'll be giving you my tips on what to do if you are single. Now, with Craig's story in mind, we thought we'd have a look at what other health and well-being related world records there are. Only one month ago, Hussein Manawa set the world record for the largest mental health lesson ever, speaking to 538 secondary school children in London. The largest music therapy lesson involved 1,814 people and was held at the Sydney Opera House. Over 21,000 kilograms of pet food was donated by Polish company Sinio to animal shelters last year. And one of the most important ones, the largest single humanitarian operation, was undertaken by the World Food Programme in 2003, which fed over 27 million people in Iraq following the war. So some incredible achievements there. And I can't wait to hear how Craig has got his own world record. But first, let's see what some of you are doing or trying to do to get your name in the history books. Alex says, participated in a world record attempt last Friday with the York Revolution, most instrumentalists playing the national anthem, had a blast. Kevin says, it's official, I am doing a Guinness world record attempt to raise awareness for childhood cancer. Fact reminds us that we've all been world record holders at some point saying you once held a world record when you were born for being the youngest person on the planet. Very clever. And Ian Williams says, look out for us Sunday in this three person costume for raising money and awareness for charity heads together. And Triton Hockey Club report that 84 year old Robert Adams is set to make the Guinness world record for oldest hockey player in Merseyside match. So clearly there are many ambitious people up and down the country looking to improve the health and well-being of others, which is really inspiring. So now we have our makeup artist Sani Soma on hand to give us some top makeup and grooming tips. Welcome to the show, Sunny. Thank you so much. So we have tips today for women and men because we don't forget about our male viewers out there. Yes, we do. We're going to do the women first. Okay. Obviously, there's a little bit more to talk about because we tend to do a lot more with our hair We're and a bit more makeup. Complicated, We're complicated. We're yeah. complicated. Yeah. Normally, a woman will take about like 45 to an hour to get ready. Yeah. Man, what five minutes? <laughs> I work in a lot of weddings, so I see a lot of like how fast the groom gets ready and how fast yeah. the bride gets ready. Big okay. difference. But for women, I think the number one tip that I would say is aim to look like yourself. This so, is, by the way, for first dates, right? First dates. Mm -hmm. So this isn't the time to like go on YouTube and find out how to do the amazing like cat eyeliner or because mm. we always want to, you know, you want to give out the best version of yourself. But I mean, it's like, oh, I want to look sultry and sexy or something like that, mm -hmm. or I want to look like a cute little girl or whatever and I have I have friends that have done it of going oh I really want to try something like I don't want to be myself I want to you're pretending to be somebody else but then actually you end up pretending to be somebody else yeah and if you're not used to wearing fake lashes this isn't the time to start no, that no. <laughs> they could go like. drastically wrong by the way yes. and <laughs> if you don't look like yourself you're not going to act like yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and that I think is really, really important. And um, also, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's the point because you will also feel uncomfortable. Yes. Because if you're not kind of dressed in stuff that you wouldn't normally wear or yeah. your makeup's different, you'll start to feel a bit weird and, and you just wouldn't, you wouldn't exactly. be comfortable. And when you're not comfortable, that's going to come across quite badly to yeah, someone. Because I mean, yeah. first dates can be a little bit uncomfortable. Even yeah, if you're yeah. with somebody like wonderful, amazing, it's nerve wracking because mm. you kind of want to give out the best version of yourself. So don't let your makeup or your hair be the thing that makes you feel <laughs> awkward. Yeah. Um, 
if the date is in at night time, if you're going out, because like a lot of dates are, but um, like you're going out for a drink or a dinner or something like that, often restaurants are a little bit dimly lit. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the time to accentuate your eyes a little bit more. This isn't going crazy, just a little bit more. So if you are kind of like an eyeliner girl, wear just that little bit more. If yeah. you, for example, if the, during the day you only wear like a nude, nude uh, wash of like uh, an eyeshadow, maybe go for a champagne one so that if there's a little bit of sparkle. <laughs> mm -hmm. So draw the attention to your eyes because, you know, eyes are the window to the soul. Okay. <laughs> and you're hopefully, you know, there will be a lot of eye contact, hopefully. Yeah. If it's going yeah, well, it's going there will well, be. Yeah, it's not right. So really draw the attention to the eyes. Mm -hmm. Also, a little bit of highlighter. Highlighter is like one of my favorite products ever. A little bit of highlighter really works well after dark. So when I put this on here, I mean, maybe you can see a little bit on screen, maybe not, but if it's like yeah. a little bit dimly lit, especially if there's candlelight, you will glow. Your Ooh. date will... Well, just to remind the viewers where you'd put the highlighter. So highlighter, uh, just on the tops of the cheekbones. Mm -hmm. If you want your nose to look straighter, just down the center of your nose and a little bit on Cupid's bow. Okay. Makes your yeah. mouth look kissable. Lovely. <laughs> Speaking of guess, uh, kissing, don't go for lipsticks that are either too dark or bright, like what I'm wearing today, but I'm not planning on kissing anybody new today, so I'm okay. Um, guys tend to, they're gonna think that they're gonna smudge. It's gonna get on them. So if you're likely to get a kiss at the end of the night, they might go, mm, mm, not so sure about that, or really kind of gloopy looking lip gloss. gloss. <laughs> either yeah. go for- That's nasty. Yeah, it's like, guys- <laughs> I yeah. don't like that. Like yeah. my husband refuses to kiss me when I'm yeah, wearing lip same, gloss. Yeah. Like really doesn't like it. And so kind of go for colors that are like your lips, but better. Something like what you're wearing today. Mm. So it's kind of close to your lip color. It's just that little bit pinker, a little bit peachier, yeah. like your lips mm -hmm. amped up, I would say. Yes. And also because lipstick, is, especially if you're eating, can come off, bring a compact. This is like, I never ever, so I am forever going compact with a mirror. So it's time to, if he goes to the bathroom, guys are very fast in bathrooms. So <laughs> be quick, have the compact ready. Check if you have lipstick in your teeth, if your nose is looking shiny, and then back into it goes. It's, okay. I, I never ever go anywhere without a little very good mirror tips. compact. <laughs> and for women, my last tip is, um, so perfume, perfume is a really personal thing. And mm -hmm. somebody told me this a long time ago, is perfume you should really only um, smell if you go in to hug somebody. Mm -hmm. So if you are close enough, like now, I could probably smell your perfume, yeah. but even here, I, I yeah. shouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. And you know, you might love the perfume and it might be your signature scent, but what if the guy doesn't? Mm. And that shouldn't be a deal breaker no, at all. No, perfume, perfume can go. Yeah. I mean, there's only very few people that are completely like use the same perfume forever, but just use a little tiny bit and obviously always on clean skin. Mm. Now men, I'm actually excited to talk about <laughs> men. <laughs> so for men, you know, a lot of, this is a really general rule, I would say, but a lot of women do prefer clean shaven men and that's just the way it is. I think it's because it just kind of looks tidier. Us women are drawn to men that look clean, most mm -hmm. women, and it just looks tidier. A little bit of stubble is fine, but um, if you are out to impress somebody, you don't want them to be looking at kind of unruly facial hair growing in all different directions. Yeah, yeah. Um, make sure you have fresh breath really make sure you have fresh breath and bring some mints along if you think you're gonna have something garlicky. Um, brush your teeth beforehand. And clean floss. teeth and floss. And brush your tongue. The tongue. Tongue scrapers. Oh yeah, I had one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, no. No, I They're didn't. really good. Yeah, I didn't get on. No, <laughs> so, no, no, no I you did didn't. the wrong one. <laughs> I think I did. I understood, uh, like. I'll introduce you to a good one. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I need to do that. But yeah, fresh breath is good. And if you tend to get dry lips, a little bit of balm, not gloss, okay. will work wonders too. And what I said for women, as far as perfume goes, the same goes for um, aftershave and men. Mm -hmm. So a little bit is fabulous. Loads is actually, will just make your date 
feel ill. Now, men and makeup, obviously most men don't wear makeup, but one thing I would advise you to either do is, if you get, if you have a tendency to get quite shiny when you're nervous, so a lot of people perspire a little bit more and um, they can get shiny foreheads. And this is, it's not powder, this is not makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing along some blotting papers would be a really good idea. These are just okay. little papers, you buy them in kind of booklets and mm -hmm. you can blot your shiny nose. Let's see, yeah, I had a little bit of oil on my skin mm -hmm. and that way you don't look, I think that if somebody's looking really, really shiny, they also look more nervous. Like, yeah, yeah, so if yeah, you're cool calm, cool, calm and collected, uh -huh. um, and yeah, a little bit of powder is fine for guys. Just regarding the blotting things mm -hmm. there, can you just use normal tissue as well if you don't have that? Or yeah, you can, well? but actually it kind of tends to break up if somebody's perspiring, <laughs> so that's not a good look either. I would probably, these are like super drug boots anywhere, they all sell and they're about a pound or two each, so um, okay. yeah, Brilliant. it's definitely worth it. Sandy, thank you so much for those lovely tips. You are very welcome. I will see you again next time. It was exciting to talk about guys. I think I need to start doing yes, more. Yes, more male grooming stuff. Guys, yeah. the men that are watching us, please, if you have any suggestions for stuff that you would like to see Sunny covering on this segment, so please do get in touch with us. It's info at chrissybshow.tv. And by the way, if you want to know more about Sunny, you can head over to our website, chrissybshow.tv, because there's loads of stuff that you do, isn't it, my darling? There is loads of stuff yes. I do. And she's got a YouTube channel and it's really, really successful and you help lots of people. It's great. But I like, I love it how you like call makeup helping lots of people. <laughs> well, it is. It's yeah, I'm not a mother. Makeup. I'm not a mother, Teresa. Okay, all right. She's not anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see you again soon, right? Yes. <laughs> all right, guys. So after the break, I'll be hearing Craig's incredible story. And trust me, you will be amazed. But first, can you answer this question? How many... Get well soon cards did Craig receive to break the world record? Was it A, 3,500, B, 350,000, or was it C, 3.5 million? Find out after this break. to the Chrissy B Show everyone where today we are very lucky to have our special guest Craig Shergold on the couch with us but before we start talking to him about his incredible journey I asked you before the break how many get well cards did he receive to set the Guinness World Record was it A three and a half thousand B three hundred and fifty thousand or C three and a half million Craig can you tell us oh you're close on the last one but another three hundred and fifty million to it no! Is it all wrong? 350 million he got. But the Guinness Book was 33 million. Oh. Then they cut it off because it was just going on and on, and he still gets cards. I'll still now. get cards. You're still getting cards? 28 yeah. years old. Let's introduce these, these amazing gentlemen first of all Craig Shergold. Yeah, nice and who's, to meet you. Who, who's, <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you as well. And who's this beside you? A very good mate of yours? This is Mr. Stevie Blunder. I met my holiday last year. Okay. He's a great bloke. <laughs> Now, before we get into your, your story, obviously, with, you know, the comedy and stuff like that, Craig, tell us about you. What happened to you when, when you were born and when you went through some difficulties? Well, 28 years ago, I was a boy who had a brain tumour and cancer and I got the most get well cards, over 350 million. OK, but how, how did people know about the story in the first place? So you had brain cancer. Yeah, the what, doctor came around by my bed. He saw all these cards by my bed. He said, this boy's going in the Guinness Book of Records. We just took yeah. it as a joke. But our friend was there and she said, let's go for it, Marion, that's my mum's name. Yeah. She started faxing her friends and it went all around the world. Wow, and what was it like getting so many cards? It was brilliant. <laughs> they all got me well. Yeah. I had cards from all the stars around the world. Kylie Minogue, Michael Jackson. Really? Nelson Mandela. Now, now tell us, regarding your, um, the cancer that you were going through, what, what was it... Um, what was it kind of like for you as in what did it teach you in life? Because obviously you went through a lot. You were, you were young at the time. How old were you when you... I was nine. You were nine? Ten that year. Okay. Do you remember much of that time? Yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. Really? What, what was it like when you sort of the things that you went through and how did you kind of cope with everything? Well, it was hard, but I had to joke around. That's how I got through cancer. By okay. telling people telling me jokes behind me, telling jokes to people. Yeah. I mean, some, some people would say it's a kind of like you shouldn't really joke about things like that, but why is it actually important to 
tell jokes. Because laughter is the best medicine, I think. Yeah. It helps you get through it. If you're miserable all the time, I, I was always miserable because I thought you were going to die. Yeah. But I had to keep la try to keep laughing. Keep okay. going. Yeah, okay. Now, now tell us as well, Craig, um, someone actually did help you with your operation and stuff. How did that come about? Well, I was getting so much publicity at the time. Mm -hmm. England sent me home to die, and as we come home, mother was going through the stacks of cards, and the yeah. first card she picked out was from a billionaire in America offering to pay for my operation over there. Wow. And what did that feel like? It was amazing. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. I remember we went over there, done the operation. It was all fine. I remember yeah. going into the operating theatre, and my mum saying to the doctor, Doctor, please don't ruin my son's good looks. <laughs> Doc said, ma'am, we're having him look like a Hollywood great. Okay. <laughs> now, did you ever meet this billionaire? That, that, yeah, I yeah. met him straight after the operation. Really? And what was it like meeting him? Oh, he cried his eyes out. I, really? He said, Aww. I gave him a picture of me that Ronnie Wood drew me as Rocky. Yeah, I, he, he was brilliant. I was telling yeah. him jokes. He said, you should be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> And that's what I am today. That's what. Okay, but before we get on to that, actually, this is how the, the two of you came together, right? So you met last year on holiday. Yeah. Just got chatting, did you, mm. Stephen? Yeah, yeah. We how was just, it? He was. He brightens up a room, Craig, and mm -hmm. wherever we was in the hotel, he'd, he'd come in and it just brightens up the, the the day, you know. Yeah. But he was telling all old jokes, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't know where he lived or, or knew he was from England because he came on the flight with us, but he could have lived anywhere. And I just said, oh, you should do stand-up comedy. And as he explained there, he's always wanted yeah. to do it since a little boy. I think it was his nan and granddad and his mum. Did you know who he was, him. by the way, when you met him? No, oh, no, I didn't. didn't. Yeah, no, okay. no. Uh, and um, he um, was telling, and I said, you should start. And he said, I've always wanted to do it. And I said, well, perhaps I can help you because I've done mm. stand-up comedy. Very badly. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, you don't, Steve. You're brilliant, uh, mate. Uh, he uh, and uh, it went from there. So when I come back, I had a gig. I hadn't gigged for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and I had a gig come through for Mind uh, West Kent, okay. and uh, asked me to uh, headline and a show they were putting on, and I invited Craig along, and that was the start. And luckily, I filmed it. I said to okay. his dad, Ernie, "Is it okay if we film this?" Yeah. And it just went from there. And of course, his dad said, I've got this original footage from 30 years ago of Mr. Kluge and uh, uh, the, the, you know, the news clippings from America. Yeah. And that's, it started us and we've been filming. We've been sort of friends ever since. And okay. it's just, and he does stand up now. He's doing 10, 15 minutes, gets good laughs, Brilliant. better than me, you know, which yeah. is <laughs> okay. what I want. In, in, and that's, that's how it's gone. So it's just naturally okay. progressed. Yeah. You know? And doing the documentary, what was that like for you? Um, it was um, it was it was part of the fun because I found filmmaking late. You know, I'd mm. done a few directing courses and stuff like that, and yeah. it just seemed something that I wanted to do. I'd made I'd done a feature film, a comedy film that uh, was what it was. It's was the first thing I did, and then when this started happening, it was a natural thing to film it, and um, mm. uh, and you see the difficulties Craig has had to face. Mm -hmm. Um, doing it, he's had heckles of which the hard thing for me in doing the documentary was um, that I took Craig from a loving bubble mm. into a world where you're gonna perhaps not everybody's gonna like you, yeah, Dis disability or not. You know, as a yeah. comedian, not everybody will like you, and you can have an off day, and you can have a crowd that want to just ruin the evening. Yeah, and yeah, Craig's had depends. that; he's been heckled, but he's, he comes back with such great yeah. lines that. Should we take a quick look at a bit of just oh, have a look yeah, at the, this please. clip of the documentary? Yeah. Dear Craig, from everybody at the University of England, we're all thinking and wishing you well, and congratulate you on your Guinness Book of Records for the largest number of Get Well cards received. Well, to tell you the truth, it was when I was ill. That's how I got through my cancer and brain tumour. I was always laughing and joking. That's how I got through it. Hello, Steve. Hello, Ernie. It's nice for me to feel he's my son. But he's naturally funny. Yeah. I'll tell you what, when you're on there, on stage, do you know how big a laugh you're getting? You're getting bigger laughs than everybody. <laughs> Take your time and, and just talk to them. Once you've got it out in your hand, you, you take it out with that hand, don't you? So take it out like that, and then wrap it. You can see that if it's over the top, bend over the top. 
thank you very much for that warm welcome everyone. You're so much better than the car out. Oh bloody hell, this is hard to do. <laughs> With our conversation on the way home, as I said to you, um, it's got to be all your own material. You can go through the script, use it. After that, you ain't going to use it no more, because I don't like comedians learning, no. having things written on their hand and all that. I'd rather you mess the joke up. Yes. Well, just, this is your first gig, and all I want is you to be cal calm, and really slow down. You, 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 you want to do it as if you were in slow motion, you know? Don't... Uh, trainee comedian, because we're going to try and get Craig on so Britain's Got Talent. It's Mr. Craig Shergold. It looks like a lot of fun as well, making it, it was though. fun, yeah. Yeah, did you enjoy it as well? I loved it. Yeah. I've loved everything I've done so far. It's been okay. brilliant. And what's it like now actually kind of being able to fulfil this dream of yours of being a stand-up comedian, Craig? I love making people laugh. I love making yeah. people feel better. Yeah. It makes me feel better and all because I'm doing it. Yeah, okay. And what about this friendship that you have, obviously, because you didn't have to help, did you? You just... But it's, you... yeah, but it, it'd be easy to say, um, oh, it, it, it's nothing, but... It's a two-way thing. Anything mm -hmm. like this is, uh, you've, if I weren't getting anything out of it, it'd be hard to, to, to bond and things like, yeah, like what yeah. we we've, we've do. You know, we banter and people, if, if people was off camera you heard us talking to one, they'd say, they're horrible to have <laughs> That's part of the fun. Yeah, OK. And, um, but, yeah, so if it hadn't, as Craig has had as much fun, not so have I. And that's, okay. so it's, a, it's a both getting that's something really out of it, you know? And, and how do you feel about Stephen doing this all for you? As well? Obviously, obviously, he's getting something out of it as well, but how do you feel about having someone just Steve, put that much time in and do all that for you? He's brilliant, I'll tell you. I, I fell in love with him when the first day I met him. <laughs> didn't fall in love with him, but he, I made friends with him as soon as I met, saw him on the coach. He had, he had yeah. one of my shirts on. I said to him, you got one of my shirts on, mate, but 20 size bigger. <laughs> 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 okay. I'm always telling jokes, that's where we... Yeah. I did say I'd take you under my wing, though, didn't I? Yeah, I said, as long as you've got deodorant on. Okay. <laughs> now, Craig, I forgot what I was going to say now, you made me forget. <laughs> I had such a good question. Yes, I know you were saying earlier, Stephen, about sort of the way people are sometimes. They can be a bit cruel and stuff like that. Did you experience any of that, and how did you handle it? Well, on the comedy circuit, I heckled them back. I got them back. Really? So that's okay. I don't want to tell you how, because it might be a bit too rude. No, don't say it, don't say it. Because <laughs> the show airs other times as well, don't worry. So you, st you stood your ground then, basically, yeah. which is really good. All right. So what's the future then for you in comedy, do you think? What's your, what's your biggest dream? What do you want to achieve? To, to get out there, raise money for myself and my dad, because we're not rich or nothing. And mm. I want to raise money for cancer and dementia. Because okay. my mum's got dementia at the moment. She's in oh, her really? Home. Okay. She's in her home. All right. And you, so you've started that process already to, to start raising money? Is yeah. something that you want we to have. do? You have, yeah? With your one-man you know, show that we're doing. Okay. Do you know how much money I raised when I was little? <laughs> Over four million pounds. Really? Wow. From my That's cards. Amazing. Yeah. That's, uh, by the way, do you keep any of those? Only the famous ones. Just the famous ones. Okay. All right. Now, Craig, we're going to talk about something else after the break, which is your love life, right? Right. Because, as you... <laughs> now, you are looking for a girlfriend. That's right. Okay, so when, when was the last time you had a girlfriend? About two years ago. Two years ago, okay then. And you had been dating much lately? Just sort of the occasional thing. We're going to go to a quick break, yeah? And then, after the break, we are actually going to be bringing on dating coach Genevieve Zawada and she's actually going to be helping you, Craig, and actually all the viewers as well. She's going to have some tips on how to find the partner in the first place, but also some, some tips for a first date, because sometimes it can go drastically wrong just from there. <laughs> but first, first of all, can you tell me what percentage of people lie about their age, height or figure on online dating profiles? Is it A? 21%, B, 51%, or C, 81%. What do you reckon, guys? About 98%. B? B? Yeah. C, I'd say. C? Yeah. All right, so let's find out after this break. Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky 203. 
Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to The Chrissy B Show, everyone, where we are joined by world record holder and stand up comedian Craig Shergold. Now, earlier we heard his amazing story, and now we're going to be helping Craig with the next journey of his life, that is finding a girlfriend. Now, before the break, I asked you how many people lie on their online dating profiles. Is it A, 21%, B, 51%, or C, 81%? And the answer is a staggering 81%. <laughs> so those of you who got that right, well done. We're here to help Craig find his perfect partner. The honest way is dating coach Genevieve Zawada. Hello, Genevieve. Hi, Chrissy. Lovely to have you on the program. Well, delighted to be here. <laughs> so, obviously, Craig is, is looking for a bit of help in this department. Yeah. So, what, what, from what you've seen of Craig so far, what, what would you say about him? Well, I think, I think the, the first thing I noticed about you, Craig, is your sense of humour. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you've, you've, got, you've got a wicked sense of humour, and I think you need to play on that and, and work with that, because humour is, is what attracts people to each other. So, it's a key quality. So, you know, mm -hmm. full marks for for that. You go have humour in a relationship, you? do, you do. Yes. That's what keeps it fresh and keeps it going. So Genevieve, tell us, obviously you're going to be giving some, some specific tips for yeah. Craig, but also this is for the benefit of our viewers at home yeah. as well. How can someone and Craig find the perfect partner, would you say? And is there such a thing? Um, is there such a thing? No, there mm. isn't such a thing. I think people's expectations of what they're looking for in love can be very unrealistic, which is why they stay single for so long. Yeah. Um, one of the first things I do when I'm working with a client is let's look at you, what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you attract what you give off. Okay. So it's really important to know who you are as a person, mm -hmm. what are your core values, your beliefs, and everything that's really important to you. Um, mm -hmm. And that goes for anybody and whatever age they are that, when they're dating. Okay. And once you know who you are, you can then start looking for someone that's going to match you in a, in a really equal, balanced mm -hmm. way. And how would, how would, for example, Craig go about looking for someone? Or obviously, because maybe, you know, he's got to a point he's being himself, he's, yeah. he's you know, he's, he's investing in himself. Or now, now what? What happens now? Well, I think one of the things that would be good for Craig is to really understand what are three deal breakers rather than having hundreds of expectations. Mm -hmm. What are the three key qualities that he's got to offer? And also three key qualities that he's looking for in, okay. in a girlfriend. Let's ask him what those yeah. qualities are. What, what three things... Are you looking for in a girlfriend, Craig? Good sense of humour. Yeah. Is there anyone who ever laugh and truthful and honest? Yeah, they're truthful good ones. Honest. Truthful, okay. honest, and nice. good sense of humour. Why, why is that so important to you? Because that's why I'm truthful and honest. Oh, that's nice. Okay. All right. You gotta be honest in a relationship. Yes, I agree. Okay, so obviously, so, so what's the next step then? So he knows what he's looking for, he knows what qualities he has. Yeah. What's the next thing, do you think? The next step is to really make a dating plan. Okay, how Ooh. am I going to find <laughs> mm -hmm. the right partner? Where am I likely to meet the right person for me? Mm -hmm. So some people it would be working with a matchmaker like myself, some people it would be looking online, um, other times it could be going to events, dating events mm -hmm. as well, which you can meet people face to face which is okay. always a good way, especially for someone like Craig, where he'll be selling himself and his personality. Mm -hmm. um, specialist websites, so if there are certain websites or apps that you feel, if you've got a passion for dogs, if you've got a passion for animals or, you know, sailing, all sorts of different things that, that mm -hmm. really float your boat. Yours could be comedy. There's, there's all sorts of different ones that are specific okay. for something that you're looking for. Craig, how did you meet your last girlfriend? I met her from school actually. Oh, okay. School reunion? Or? No, we were best friends at school and then after okay. school finished we just started dating. Okay, alright then. Okay. So now what about, the, obviously first dates are uh, quite a nerve-wracking experience for many yeah. people. Craig, what are your first dates and have they gone smoothly or has it always been a bit awkward, would you say? Sometimes rocky, sometimes good. Sometimes you, good. You take them to a bar or something or you came, take them to the pictures. Yeah. Same week. Okay. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Mm. All right, what about your top tips then okay. for, for the dating phase? First of all, don't go anywhere noisy. 
because oh. there's nothing worse than on a first date you're shouting at each other. So okay. you actually want somewhere that's quiet, that's relaxed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going for a walk, you know, a drink and a nice walk. The weather's getting warmer now, so yeah. going for a nice walk is, is, is a good way to just sort of walk, talk, have a coffee. Avoid alcohol mm -hmm. um, because people, you know, have a few too many drinks yeah. and can yeah. give off you know, the wrong impression. So okay. we say if you're having alcohol, stick to maybe one or two glasses. Don't go, don't go crazy and, mm -hmm. and don't drink beforehand. Um, okay. you know. But people kind of do that maybe to calm their nerves, don't they? Just I kind know. Of be more confident. Yes. Yeah. But it can be a disaster. It can be okay. an absolute disaster to have too much to drink beforehand. Do you have a, do you have a little drink before you go out on a date, Greg? Yeah, tea. <laughs> <laughs> Tea's fine. That's Stick okay. to tea. <laughs> Stick to tea. Have a nice, strong cup of tea. <laughs> I think we'll allow him that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Okay, yeah, we'll let you off for that one. <laughs> no, I don't drink before, guys. If, if a girl wants to go out for a drink in a bar, I'll take her to one. Okay. But I don't particularly just take her to a bar. I'll ask yeah, yeah, her okay. where she wants to go. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. I think I'd avoid the cinema because you can't talk. You can't really get to know someone for a first date. So cinema may be a couple of dates down the line, but mm. not really good on a first date. Right, to take her to a cafe, you're saying? A nice cafe, um, a nice... a nice. Uh, people don't really like having meals on a first date either because no. then there's that awkwardness. Who's going to pay? Right. Um, and, you know, then women get upset if the man doesn't pay. Men think, oh... They just want a meal and then I'm never going to see them again. So yeah. there's a little bit of awkwardness around meals. So a simple drink. Um, we're seeing a lot of people going for brunch, actually. A very easy yeah, brunch yeah. is becoming quite trendy. That's an idea for you, yeah. Greg. Brunch, yeah, a brunch she, day? She's turning American now. You're not French no more, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a big I trend like brunch. I love having brunch. <laughs> <laughs> but just establish, you know, who's paying and, and everything, so there's no awkwardness. OK, you wouldn't yeah. do that beforehand, would you? Like, no, 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 no. For brunch no, 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 no. But if a guy's asking a girl out, it's, yeah. it, it's, you know, it's nice to be chivalrous and, and make that effort. It's not breaking the bank either if it's brunch. Yeah, OK. I mean, I, th I think sometimes, going back to the restaurant thing, I think a restaurant is so sort of um uh, it's, it can be really awkward like if yeah. you're there for the first time with someone you don't haven't maybe known them before maybe it's like a first date or even a blind date and then if yeah. things aren't going well there's so, it's so awkward yes. isn't it and it's too long i think a too long a period yeah. as well but if it's like you're saying just for a coffee or yeah. just brunch or something you can sort of if it's not going well you can get up there quite fast can't you absolutely you can make an excuse and leave yeah <laughs> All right, any, any, any other tips dating tips you have for us um, I think be yourself, be really mm. natural. Don't try and be something that you're not. Yeah. Um, don't overdo the humour as well, because sometimes your mm. nerves can kick in, mm. I think, and then you try and cover the nerves with your humour. So I think it's really important. And also how you dress on a oh, first date. That, yeah. yeah, it's really, it, keep it simple. Okay. Keep it really simple. Um, for Craig, I would suggest nice pair of jeans mm -hmm. a white shirt just a nice white shirt crisp white shirt pair of jeans and mm. um you know just some nice smart and clean shoes okay <laughs> oh you said my shoes ain't clean no 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 <laughs> i haven't <laughs> said that <laughs> <They're fine. Thank laughs> no they look perfectly clean to me that, the shoes are very clean and the hat's nice and shiny yeah. as well i have to say <laughs> now craig do you have any questions for our dating co expert here uh, if you can help me out in any way, I'm glad you've helped me. Yeah. If you can help me out in other ways, that'd be perfect. Well, we'll, we'll have a chat later right. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what we can do. Maybe recommend some, some dating sites that would be good for you and, and how to create the right profile. Because if okay. you are dating online, mm -hmm. it's so important to have the right profile and the right pictures. And Be don't lie, as we heard, yes. right? Well, that, that didn't surprise me. I <laughs> thought it was actually going to be higher than really? that. Yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, be, be honest and truthful. I know a lot of people aren't, as, we've, as we heard earlier, but mm. try and be as honest and truthful as you can because you're going to get found out yes. eventually, especially yeah. if you meet someone you really like. Mm -hmm. Honesty is um, always the best. Yeah, policy. and keep the pictures clean mm -hmm. <laughs> and just of you, not a whole group of people. Um, okay. There's things like that where you look at profiles and there's not, you know, there's a whole group of people or people have got their children. Mm -hmm. um, just have a really simple shot of you, nice headshot, yeah. where you're just looking happy and nice. That's great. Genevieve, thank you so much for pleasure. your advice for Craig and actually for the viewers. Craig, all the best with your search for. 
the love of your life. Oh, hope it all goes you, well. And let us know how it's going. I will do. <laughs> and all the best also with your comedy. Oh, today. thank you very much, okay. Chrissy. It's been a pleasure to meet you. You too. Alrighty, so don't go away because after the break we're going to be getting a workout video courtesy of fitness expert Faye Jede and I'll be giving you my tips of what to do if you're single. But first, according to research, how long does the honeymoon period typically last? Is it A, one month, B, six months or C, one year? Tune in after the break to find out. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show everyone, where today we've been hearing all about cancer, comedy and finding love with the incredible Craig Shergold. Now before the break I asked you how long the honeymoon period typically lasts. The answer? Well it's one year, according to research by Monmouth University. Now as we're always telling you on the show, fitness is key to strong mental health. So here is fitness expert Faye Jede giving us a great workout for shifting the fats. Hey there guys, thank you so much for joining me in today's fitness segment. Now today I've got a great workout for you. I'm going to be showing you some great cardio moves that if you incorporate them into your own workout, they're really going to help you shift the fat and burn and lose some weight, okay? So let's start first with a squat. So we're going to do narrow squats, okay? So when you have enough feet slightly apart, hands by your ears and you're going to sit back down like as if you're sitting into a chair, okay? So sit back and then squeeze your glutes at the top, okay? Make sure your knees does not go past the toes. So really sit back and squeeze the glutes. Excellent. Do two sets of eight for me at home. Good. Now take the legs wide down. We're gonna do something that are bigger squats now. So we've taken them apart. Staying with the hands above the head. I'm really gonna sit, okay? Good, now if your balance isn't great, you can place your hands across your chest like this, in front of you, because I find it easier sometimes doing this if you're a beginner, or if you're advanced, keep it next to your ears, okay? Keep going. Two, and one. Excellent. Now we're gonna do some power onto this, okay? Because like I said, it's for, to help you burn some fat, okay? With your cardio. So we're gonna squat, and then we're gonna jump when we do that, when we come up, okay? So squat, and then jump. Point your toes as you jump. Excellent. Lengthen the legs. Keep going. These are my favorite. Really feel them on my legs. Good. And one more. Excellent, okay, let's go down, cardio. You can feel the breath now, I'm getting out of breath because I'm working hard. Now we're going to do something known as mountain climbers. We're going to bring our feet up, tap it here and back. Starting off basic, breathe as you do this and then we're going to take it up, okay? So we're going to go faster. Breathe as you do this, excellent, just four more. Well done. Now we're going to add to the mountain climbers. We're going to do jacks. So we're going to go wide, together, and then mountain climbers for two. Here we go. Jacks. One, two. Jack. One, two. Jack. Excellent. One, two. Whew. One, two. I'm sure you guys at home are feeling this. Excellent. Great. Two more. And last one. Literally what we're going to do is, we stand up, okay, and then we're going to come down, just like this, down, one, 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 up, down, one, 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 up, and then we're just going to try and do it faster. So we're working hard, that's the cardio. Squeeze, excellent. Just give me three more guys. Making sure you do two sets of eight at home. Last one. There you have it. 
Well done. Thank you so much for joining me in today's workout. Thank you very much to Faye there. So now it's time for my tips on what you can do if you are single. So my first point is, is to be grateful. Now you might be saying to me, Chrissy, how can I be grateful when I'm lonely? I really want to have someone in my life. Well, most people do want to have a partner, but I've also seen many people that um, have gone into wrong relationships and they're really going through a hard time now because they didn't um, take care of certain issues that they themselves had and they also weren't careful about you know, choosing the right partner. So this is a time that you actually have an opportunity of working through certain issues before going into a relationship. So if there are maybe things like mental health issues that you're battling that you haven't you know, gotten help for, this is, this is a time that you can work on you. And if, you, you know, if everything's okay in your life, th there's nothing wrong with actually um, growing and getting better and, and becoming more interesting. This is a time that you have right now for you. So see in that way. And also relationships are great, but they can also be distracting and take up lots of your thoughts, lots of your time. So again, you know, sometimes people miss sort of their single life, not because they want to go out partying and like, you know, sleeping around or anything. It's just that they had more time on their hands. So just make the most of the time that you have right now. My second point is become more interesting. So I did actually mention this, but it is good. And it's a lot of people sort of kind of wait around and they think, oh, no, I haven't got a partner. So I'm just going to wait around and just you know, hoping that someone will turn up and they just don't do anything different. So this, again, this is a time that you can make yourself interesting, but not because you want to attract a partner only. You should do it first for yourself because it, it really does your confidence a lot of good if you are actually maybe investing in yourself, doing a course, traveling, doing something. It makes, it just opens your horizons much more. The third point is try to avoid looking for a relationship. And, and what do I mean by that? Um, some people are so kind of desperate when they, they go out, for example, they, it's like they can't relax and enjoy themselves with their friends or, you know, even if they just go out with family or something like that, they're, they're just always on the lookout. They're always thinking, you know, if this person comes and talks to me, is this going to, uh, you know, result in a relationship? And they're kind of on edge and they don't really enjoy themselves. So don't, don't make it a big deal. If you do go out, don't necessarily, okay, you might meet someone when you go out, but don't make it going out about finding someone. Uh, in, in my husband's case, for example, he was, I wouldn't say he was desperate, but he was, you know, wanting to be with someone and like every time he'd go to, to a nightclub, he would sort of try to chat someone up and like wanted to, to get together with someone. And then in the end, he just kind of thought, you know what, I've had enough of this. I'm just going to concentrate on my degree. I'm going to put, you know, my love life aside. I'm just going to concentrate on my degree, on studying. I'm going to make that my, my, my priority. And it's like when he started to, to do that and actually invest in himself, that's when I came along and told him that I liked him. So it's like he wasn't expecting it. It was just something completely out of the blue. And actually, when, when I first sort of told him, he, he kind of was a bit hesitant because he thought, well, actually, I want to kind of concentrate on my degree. I don't really want a distraction right now. But then he changed his mind, of course, and we've been married um, 19 years now. But what I'm saying is, it, you know, sometimes things happen when you don't expect it. But if you're going out looking all the time, your eyes are open, checking everyone out, it, it's not very attractive and it makes you a bit desperate. My fourth point is to make friends. So don't do this again with the intention of finding a partner, but just to widen your social circles, because someone might actually know someone and who knows someone else. And you can even be making friends with someone that could be your potential partner. So it's good to have friends around you. It's good to, you know, to mingle and everything. And sometimes, again, when there's no pressure and you're just being yourself, you might actually find someone that way. And my fifth point is to be sure. So don't, please, please, please do not jump into any relationship because you want to be with someone or because you feel lonely. Do take your time. If this person you know, is, is right for you, it's going to work out naturally. You know, you know when someone's right for you, you know, you kind of, I, I, with, with my husband, for example, I always knew that he would be the one that I would be with for the rest of my life because we just clicked. We, there wasn't any kind of awkwardness or anything like that. So just get to know each other first and don't be in a hurry. Just let things flow naturally and you'll see that it will work out much better for you. 
All right, everybody, so we have reached the end of today's program, but don't forget if you have any comments about this show, if there's a program that you've watched that you really like, if you want to contribute in any way, please do let us know. You can email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow, or you can leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Until next time, bye-bye for now.